I don't give a fuck, bitch! Welcome to the first episode of Digibro and Best Guy Ever. That's you. Dick and Bordy time, baby. Yeah, baby. Yeah. 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 Baby. yeah. 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 We're, uh, we're, we're talking about Rick and Morty, everybody. Season three. Season yeah. three. The, uh, you know, the season three premiere came out on April 1st on Adult Swim. It was a big deal. Everybody was excited about it. And, uh, we're thinking about maybe talking more about the rest of season three. So here we are starting things Rick, off with, with that episode. Rick and Morty is like my favorite show ever. It's, uh, um, wa- just rewatching that episode again just now. It's really hard to argue that that show isn't like the most dense with high quality content show anywhere right yeah. now. I mean, uh, that's what I love about it. It's so fuck. It's so dense. It's There's so, so much dense. Information. Every single Every shot has so much going yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, it's it's fantastic. I I was a huge fan of the first season. Watched it like five times. Yeah. Um, still haven't really rewatched season two. I intended to do that before three started, and mm-hmm. three seemingly has started Snuck out up of nowhere. Us. Yeah. But yeah. then it ha- hasn't actually. It yeah. It was just a, a weird April Fool's thing. Confused the shit out of me because mm. I was in uh, I was in Atlanta when it came out. I didn't get the chance to see it. Right. And then every week I was like, "Why am I not hearing about the new season of Rick and Morty?" Sounds like, like you were out of it. You I didn't, thought uh... I was just missing episodes, and no one was telling me somehow. Nah, and, man. Uh, I was really <laughs> confused. But so let me just let me just uh, talk about how great this a- this was as an April Fool's episode. So April Fools every year is terrible because everyone like tricks you and says like, "Hey, I'm gonna do this," and then I'm not gonna do it. And then you're disappointed. Am I the only one who loves April Fools? Yes. Like, we were I, all complaining about it, but me, the rest of the PCP I, were all shitting I love on it. April Fools because people will always. Well, it, it depends on who it is. Some people uh-huh. just do some bullshit, but like, I love when people pull out all the stops to do some crazy shit. Well, that's you know? that's what makes like, it good. Like if you follow uh, the the old webcomic X- XKCD, yeah. like every year he would do some kind of like insane shit, like turn his entire website into a fucking uh, text adventure game or something, like some crazy programming shit. Well, that's and, like, fine. It used to be that websites would really go all out and make like a crazy thing uh, for April Fool's Day, and it was always exciting to see like what everybody was doing that day. And uh, I historically have always made April Fool's videos that I Well, I really what you're love. describing is the good side of April Fool's, yeah. but there is the downside where is people say like, "Oh, I'm going like uh, oh, Half-Life 3 is out." Yeah. Wow, I'm so excited. Oh, it's not actually out. Okay, fuck you. But what I mean, but the, this episode is Watch exactly your fucking that. Watch calendars, people. That's all. To, like everyone. That's all I'm saying. Everyone loves fucking Rick and Morty. Everyone agrees it's fantastic. To like on yeah. April Fools, get this like loop of the of the new episode that is so legitimately good and well crafted and has it even the episode itself has a ton of Mister X as Rick yeah. and Morty episodes tend to do. Like this is exactly what an April Fool's should be. We're getting more. We're not being cheated or lied to. Right. We're just getting extra stuff. That's what you should celebrate about the day. Yeah, I mean that's the best way to April Fools is to, of course uh, to make to make an actual surprise by people by giving them more shit by yeah. making them happy as opposed to pissed off. Yeah, that's what I like. Though personally, I think you should just know what day it is. It, it's I guess not so. hard to know April first is coming. I don't know. But see, that's maybe just because th- I make a big deal out of it. Like I always have plans for April Fool's, so I know it's coming. But that just Nothing means can trick me one day, day of the year. You just be like, oh, everything's a lie today. No one is telling me yeah. the truth today. That's just annoying. I don't I like want it. that. <laughs> maybe it's a nice change of pace. I guess I fucking get pissed off by it. But anyway, forget that. To me, it's like the like the you know the classic festivals, the the mask like the the masquerade. Yes. Like no one's themselves. Today. It's, mm-hmm. a, it's an escape from the normalcy, and it, and everyone can just do well. And again, I think it's been hurt by the fact that the internet is now, um, like the internet's now real life, and yeah. like there are real life repercussions of changing everything. Right. Where like ten years ago, YouTube did a thing where the entire front page, everything linked to Rickroll. Right. YouTube right. could never do that now because it would hurt too many people's careers. That's true. And That's it would true. be a huge fucking deal. So like now their their April Fools is always like some lame shit you have to actually go find. Yeah. And click yeah. on it's like, oh I already know what it's gonna be. I know it's April Fool's Day. You can't fucking trick me today, you know? Um but I miss when uh when sites would do I mean, fucking 4chan still does like They'll have like a song looping in the background of yeah. the entire fucking website. For and a whole and you know what? That is annoying, but it's four chan is not really essential for anybody. So yeah, it like exactly. that's more okay. It it doesn't really interfere with your day. Anyway, Rick and Morty. Yeah, uh, yeah. I feel like that's an appropriate interlude to discuss yeah. Rick and Morty anyway. Well, I don't know how I don't know how long we plan for these podcasts to be, but we can go on as long as we need to. Yeah. It's a pilot episode and mm-hmm. we don't know when we're gonna be covering the next one, when it right. will be out. No one knows when the next when the episodes yeah. are gonna be out, so and um I mean this episode, 
like the biggest question on everyone's minds is because it was like season two ended on a huge fucking cliffhanger. Right. How are they gonna start off? You know, they have to open season three with something kind of epic. Yep. And this the the show opens up by lampooning this. Of course. Like it starts off with this joke that they're all in a Shoney's and, oh, who wants to hear about how I escaped from prison? Like, that would be stupid. And, like, it's, like, I'll even admit, like, even though I knew I'd heard spoilers for this episode uh-huh. before I watched it, even though I knew that, I still had that reaction of, like, Aww. oh, you motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> but then, of course, when it turns out but to see, be a lie, it's like, oh, okay. That's, that's exactly that April Fool spirit I love. They, yeah. they act like they're fucking you over and then they give you everything you wanted and it's yeah. so great oh and the actual <laughs> shit that rick does it turns out it was all part of his fucking plan and they do this whole rigmarole with all this new technology of like mind transferring we haven't seen before oh it's the best yeah so this episode continues a sort of trend that i saw happening through season two and especially with the ending of season two mm-hmm. of um i feel like rick and morty owes a lot to Game of Thrones. Yeah? Like, I think the way that this show uses, like, brutal violence um, is sort of, like, because we are now in a in a culture where that's, like, a normal thing on mainstream television. Uh-huh. Of, like, like insanely violent scenes Has happening Has HBO to, like, become mainstream television? Or is it just oh, the popularity yeah. of the show? Like, yeah, because HBO now is way more easily accessible well, HBO and just, it used torrents to... are a thing. Well, yeah, but it... it you yeah. know Game of Thrones is the most torrented show of all time. I believe it. It had like millions it. and millions of torrents. Yeah. Right. Okay. All so, right. So everyone's everyone's seen it. Everyone yeah. has seen Game of Thrones. It's it's that's the culture we're in now. Is like that this kind of hyper violent, um, like crazy dark shit is what gets talked about. Uh-huh. And I mean, the the ending of season two was clearly a Game of Thrones parody. It was a red wedding. Yeah. It was yeah. the red wedding, mm-hmm. like redone in Rick and Morty. And I just love the way the show. Um, it totally like gets into the headspace of, like, who is the audience of Rick and Morty? Like, what kind of cultural stuff are we... Because, like, a, a lot of the show is in reference to, like, uh, cultural touchstones and yeah, stuff. Like, there's yeah. lots of movie parodies. There's, like, a whole episode where they're on the Purge planet. It's like... Right, would, which was what great. What would it be like if there's a planet that does the Purge? And the, the way they and, dryly and matter-of-factly address, like, yeah. what a real Purge planet would be... I mean, in their lampooning way. It's, it's great. It's yeah. wonderful. And so when they do, like, a Red Wedding scene, like, they know exactly how the audience is going to feel at every step of the way mm-hmm. and the moment that like really got i mean that episode is fucking amazing a yeah. lot of shit happens in that episode but the moment that got me the most was uh right after bird person gets shot yeah then uh rick screams like bird person no and literally he said that while i was saying no huh. bird person and <laughs> like it's like one to one me and rick saying it at the same time and Sick. i'm like cuz they knew that that's what the audience was going to do they yeah. knew you were going to yell no bird person you know and so they they matched it and it's like they totally get the ebb and flow of your feelings and stuff and like it's well written man it's well written there's so many like there's so much stuff that they've allowed themselves this show does what like um my little pony fucked up with its background characters oh yeah you're right it makes you care about them in a real way i mean in, in all fairness it was one episode that was garbage that pretty much but, ruined that whole well, thing what but I, what i mean is that like in 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 mlp fandom for yeah. anybody who doesn't know because uh, we, we're we're a few years out from it and True. Uh, people probably don't know what we're talking about anymore um the fan base of my little pony like, really ran with every random uh, fucking background character that was in the show. Yeah. We, they all had, like, fan-made backstories, and, like, people had all these ideas about them, and, like, they each one was a popular character in their own right, because they would show up in the background all the time, or mm-hmm. have, like, one line here and there, and stuff like that. And so, all those background characters became kind of famous, and eventually the show writers became aware of this, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. they kind of tried to do something with it, yep. and it was yep. terrible. Uh, granted, some people don't agree. Some people, you know, there were some decent that. things, like the way they handled the fact that Bon Bon had like two canon, or like there was a fandom name and a real name. They made her a secret agent with an alias. Like that's one clever way to handle that kind of a thing. But there were many things it's, that were bad and it's shitty. Just that the episode itself. The is episode terrible. was garbage. So yeah, and yeah, it's, yeah. Like and just the general way that they tried to like they they're trying to pander to the audience, but it's like they're trying to give us what we are saying we want. Yeah. Rick and Morty knows what we want. And gives it to us in ways we don't expect, uh-huh. such as it's got all these background characters who people just naturally started caring about. People love Bird Person. People loved, uh, you know, all these random, weird, wacky characters. That but fucking cat of, dude whose name I forget? Uh, uh, Squanch. Squanch, yeah. And, Squanchy. 
And instead of, like, giving us some fan service episode where it's like, hey, it's all your favorite background characters, they murder all of them. Yeah. And it makes it even more memorable because it's like, instead of just like, uh, oh, here's Bird Person again. We know you love Bird Person. Here you go. Have as much Bird Person as you want. No. Like, the second or third episode he's in, he gets fucking shot and dies. Yeah. And it's like... Because they know you actually do care about him in this weird way. This guy with, like, two lines, but he's such an endearing character. Yep. That when he gets shot, you're like, oh, no, not bird person! <laughs> ah! it, 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 but it's it's also that, like, they can get away with that. Because it, it never feels too dark because of the fact that they're all just dumb background characters. Yeah. Like, a yeah. guy... You see a guy get shot whose name is like Schmoopy Doop or something. Or, or, uh, or Poopy Butthole. Poopy, Mr. Poopy Mr. Butthole, Poopy yeah. Mr. Poopy Butthole, yeah. you know, like... Like, it's... The scene is, like drawing out like this pathos and everything and it's yeah. like everyone's crying and shit like that and, like on some <laughs> level it hits you emotionally because you kind of care about poopy butt not to mention but it's not like they murdered <laughs> your favorite character who you really care about and a lot know? of that has to do with the way that rick himself is such like an antisocial, you know whatever misanthrope and yeah. uh i'm using that word right the one who hates people yeah yeah i was wondering if it's the one who hates men i'm not saying that no, it's no. the other thing but uh like the way he doesn't give a fuck about anyway about anyone and the way that he does react when bird person dies and like continually has this relationship with him and he talks about like yeah we fought in the war it's like we we're yeah. buddies to actually have that character care about someone makes us care about them too and makes their right. death all the more impactful so from that pr- perspective too it really works i definitely think that like because rick is presented as someone who's like so yeah over the edge mm. and like doesn't care about anything yeah anytime he emotes right you it feels serious like it's that much more impactful, like when he like tries to fucking, kill himself in episode. Three yeah, after two. dating that girl and having being yeah. like cut off. Oh my god! And I, Jesse freaks out about that episode. Yeah. That one's devastating. Oh my god! Just because it's like Legion. No, whatever. You just, is. you just you just go like, Unity. oh my god! It's like yeah, he does like that. My favorite thing about Rick and Morty, and uh, I know Tom ha- Tommy Oliver had a problem with this aspect of the show. He yeah. thought it was ruining Rick that yeah. they showed so much emotion. That's my favorite thing about the show is mm-hmm. that. There is this, like, empath... Like, at heart, he is highly empathetic. And the reason that he... The reason he acts this way isn't because he hates people. It's because I think he cares too much about people. And he knows that, like, the universe is an unchanging, unfeeling, you know, like, monstrous place. Like, caring about people is just going to lead to pain, so don't do it. It's like he's a man who's gained the knowledge of a god and is, you know, aware of how insignificant everything is. And it's really fucked him up. Yeah, he's like, you know, how can I bring myself to give a shit about people when I know what's going to, like, that they are nothing, you know? Yeah. But then, like, he can't help himself because he is still human. That's true. So, like, sometimes he has to, he can't help but care, you know? And, like, if he really falls in love, like he did in that episode, mm-hmm. and loses out, and, and I mean, it's not even just that, it's also that he's drunk, and yeah. he gets you emotional, yeah. you know? And, like, he's fucked up on drugs and shit, and it's like... <laughs> Yeah, that's the moment when you're, like, he could have easily killed himself then if he hadn't passed out. He really tried. He you know, really he put like, his best effort. He yeah. really, like, did it and, and, and just failed. The fact that he didn't push, yeah, he went all the way and really yeah. tried to do it. I mean, it's been said, but that's oh, such an intense a moment. such a fucking great scene. And, uh, yeah, and then when we see, like, with this, at the end of season two, when he's like, mm-hmm. you know, what, are the, what are you in for? And he says everything. It's like, you know, I've, yeah, I've... Yeah. He, like, he finally realizes, you know, I can't bring myself to say I don't care about my family. But of course, know? of course, all this, I mean, you know, we, we were saying this too, but all this uh, you can you can compare to is in parallel to how, like, h- him turning himself in at the end of the second of season, uh, yeah. you know, to, to supposedly save his family and, like, you know, give them back the life that he stole from them was actually, I mean, and it's kind of ambiguous, but it seems like it was actually all part of a plan right. to depose Jerry as patriarch of the family and become, like, the ruler and get yeah. Morty exclusively because well, he's it's, so evil and it's, fucked up. That's the it's thing about it is that with, with Rick, you can never you say can't for tell. sure. Yeah. And, I mean, I personally think that, like, I think that he is ultimately empathetic because we've seen him do it in moments. Like, when he tried to kill himself, no one was there to witness that. There was right. no benefit to that. Mm-hmm. Um, when he goes back, like, the first moment we really see Rick act that way is when Morty gets, like, almost raped by the Jelly Bean King. Yeah. And Rick, yeah. like... When he realizes, like, that Morty's upset, he, like, changes gears and, like, tries to comfort him. Yeah. And, like, leads him. And then he shoots the Jelly Bean King just out of I anger, love the fact you know? that he murdered that guy because yeah. he deserved it. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't no. pussy yeah. out. Well, that's, that's one of my favorite scenes in the show because yeah. of the fact that it's, like, it shows that Rick, like, 
on even though he doesn't care in general, like he saw something happening right in front of him yeah. uh, to someone he does kind of care about, mm -hmm. and so he was like, "Well, I can do something about this. I can kill that guy." You know you what? Know? That kind of speaks to a fundamental, like psychological, you know, facet that humans have, where we're much more empathetic about things that are directly in front of us, as opposed yeah. to like news that there are billions of people dying yeah. elsewhere. Well, because it, you know. it, it just when you hear how big it is, you're yeah. like, "I can't do anything about that." But even but it's interesting to me. It, it's just like, "Oh, well, I literally know I can do." something something about it's, this because it's right in front of me it's interesting know? to me that even a character like rick who is the smartest man in the universe yeah. even he like re retains that perspective that yeah. that very human perspective and only to, and that's the thing like when you meet first meet the council of ricks and everything like yeah. it's established that he's like right on the edge mm. between like being the the evil like like, like yeah, if you're yeah. slightly more evil than him you're an evil fucking master villain yeah but if yeah. you're slightly more righteous than him then you're like a... A little bitch, you know, I don't yeah, know, like, yeah. <laughs> like, he's, he's right in the perfect interstice to be the most interesting Rick, which yeah. is why we follow yeah. this Rick, right, you know? Right, right. Um, it's really, he's a, he's a real uh, reflection of humanity, like a certain perspective of what a human being is, yeah. you can see in that, it's real cool. So, I, I this episode um, accomplishes a lot of things that I wanted to have, like, yeah. I, okay... After season one of mm. Rick and Morty, like, my biggest thing that I wanted to happen in season two was for Beth and Jerry to split up. Right. Like, because the way I saw it was, like, season one was constantly suggesting it, and, like, this is a show that has plot progression, yep. so, like, let's do it. Let's do away with this nuclear family dynamic, like, you know, because the first season was constantly bouncing between, like, home life and crazy sci-fi uh, A plot, yeah. you know? And, like... It did sometimes feel a little restricted by the fact that it had to do, like, normal shit. The cutaways home, to know? the Jerry and Beth bits are almost every time the worst part of the episode. Yeah, even when they're good. Like, even they're not when they're always good. bad. The Gazorpazorp stuff with them is actually great and is probably yeah. the best part of that particular episode. Yeah. But not every time. They are, you know, in general, they're the weakest or, or part. Or the, uh, the, the, the TV episode. Oh, did I say Gazorpazorp? I meant to say Mr. Meeseeks. I meant to yeah. say Mr. Meeseeks. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, like... So it's just that it, it felt very explored in season one. So yeah, like I was yeah. really hoping that season two would like start off with them getting divorced. Yeah, and it didn't happen. Instead, season two went even heavier on the divorce element. It did. And like, it did. Again, it had ultimately the episodes were good, but I was just like, I get it. Yeah. You know, like I want these two split up because this is going to go on forever, and like I feel like we've done everything we can with it. Yeah. So the fact that this episode, a big part of it, is getting Jerry out of the picture, and like the way that Rick talks to Morty at the end is obviously meta. He's, like, describing to, to Rick, or to Morty, like, we have done this as writers. But then, we are writing Jerry out of the show to get rid of him because we're sick of him. I still, know? though, in the context of a character saying these things to Morty, it's just so, so wonderfully black and yeah. dark and <laughs> evil. It's great. It's fantastic. It's like, your father was, your father crossed me. Your father and the entire galactic government crossed me, so I got rid of them both. That's, yeah. what a fucking badass. That's so yeah. sick. God, I love Rick. And it just, like, <laughs> what I love about this show is it's never content to just be status quo. Like, yeah. like um, I mean, that's what most most episodic comedy shows mm -hmm. like this, you know, they have to have this baseline thing they can always return to, this sense of normalcy that's kind of in the background, and it can be hard to change that and break away from it. And, like, I was really scared that after season two, like, are we always going to have this Beth Jerry thing going yeah, on? Like, yeah. this is getting tiring, you know? And they did some, like, like episode two of season two, where they have Jerry in the daycare, was fucking genius. Yeah, that's a great you one. That's, that's a great, great way to do a Jerry B plot. But, like, um, you know, Jerry's a, he can't develop as a character because it would defeat the point. That's right. He's that's a right. character who's, who's, like, inherently static and... He's boring now, so let's get rid of him. And they did. They mm -hmm. cut him out, and I'm like, I, I fully expect him to not show up throughout season three. Yeah, I think it would a little undercut what they're going for here yeah. if he just was back. Exactly. And uh, and then they're also doing away with the Rick Federation thing, because obviously that's limiting in a way that like it always puts Rick... like There's there's a definitive opposition he has yeah. that's always around, yeah. and it's like, we've explored a lot of it, and I mean, it's not that they couldn't have done more with it, but like having it there means like... There's certain rules we've established, like Rick can't do this because right. the council will intervene. There's certain things that, like, we've made it so if if this or this happens, we have to involve these characters. And so I see the writers going, all right, that's too limiting. We want to do crazier shit. We want to make it so Rick can do those things. It's that very exciting the that they're around. changing things on such yeah. a level. It, that so, really is a good sign. So now we've taken out, like, the entire 
power structure of the universe. Yeah, and the galactic totally government and the Ritz. Yeah, things, you right. Know? Like from here, the show can go anywhere, and there's nothing that's there's no like system that was in place that's going to hold it back. From doing my my only wants. kind of fear was that they really had established, like, those were, as you were saying, like, they were the highest level authorities that existed. Yeah. And it's a little hard to imagine, like, what could easily replace those. It's right. going to take some creativity. So I'm, yeah. I highly anticipate I mean, what I we see. I wouldn't be surprised if we got, like, uh, you know, Rick forming a new government himself or something. Well, there's or no like, Rick would be. In, I mean, he might do that just to, like, deal with the problem and then divorce himself yeah. from it. Because he can't be involved in no, bureaucracy. No, no, no. Not of course. at all. But, like... Yeah. Just like he did with the with the I devil mean, shop. Maybe thing. it just turns the fucking whole world completely anarchic, or the whole universe goes to anarchy or something. You know, like you know, that's like maybe this whole season is just like batshit insanity all the time. The, the <laughs> only reason I think they won't go that way is because that is a little bit harder to write for than I expect yeah. them to go for. Yeah, I mean, there yeah. is a bit of a formula here that I think they generally yeah. want to stick to. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm just really curious where we're gonna go with with yeah. no Jerry and no um, no Rick Council, which like, you know, it, it's it's almost sad because like the Rick Council is such a cool idea. I know, I loved it. That I could have watched it forever. It's, it's such but a. But at the same time, yeah, it's really ballsy to just kill yeah. them. Like to take this great idea and say we've done all we want to do with it. Let's just. Like, make sure you know as a viewer that it's gone, yeah. you know? <laughs> they really hammered in those points. And yeah. I, I just love, I mean, this is a, just a compliment to the entire show, how logically consistent everything is. Like, with Rick having an interdimensional portal gun, of course, there would something like the Rick thing would develop and the way it impacts his character. Because he has the portal gun, he developed this, you know, lack of care about anyone and anything in his life because there's literally infinite copies of them. It doesn't matter what he does at any point. And uh, these Ricks are going to form their federation to live their, like, own outside existence, outside any kind of, like, galactic government that existed. Uh, it's just, and, and and everything's just so consistent and wonderful and it, it's just why the show is so good. And uh, continues one of my favorite things about Rick and Morty is mm. how breakneck it is. That, yeah, like, yeah. There's the scene... Where the the Rick Council breaks into the alien thing and just Rick himself gets shot in the face immediately. Yeah. Like, yeah. our Rick, we see, get fucking shot in the face. And it's like, whoa, you know, but you also kind of know that he just left. So it's just like, you're, you're, you're barely able to keep up yeah. with the yeah. things that are happening. It's like, people are getting shot, people are taking a shit. It's a, it's a, <laughs> it's, it's a wild ride, you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I'm gonna go take a shit. Ugh. That was that's a great recurring thing. I yeah. think he's using that as like his. I need to leave this room now and go yeah, to other exactly. stuff. I got to take a shit. <laughs> and it's just because no one would question anyone saying that. You and know, it's like... it's the 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 great way they use the dialogue in such a snappy pace. Like he he walks into yeah. the room and is like, "Whoa, you can't be in here. This is the room where if you press a couple buttons and knobs, it like teleports the entire <laughs> yeah. citadel." He's like, "Well, you probably shouldn't have designed it that way." Beep boop beep explosion. Yeah. Plot moving along. And Break and you, neck. immediately. Like the very first thing you see is. It's just a shot of the Citadel reappearing inside what is clearly the world government. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, everything's done now. Like, yep. what, in that one shot, we totally understand that both of those governments are just gone. Yeah. You know, and it's yeah. just like, well, moving along. And, and they spoon feed you a little bit. But they're just like, you know, oh no, we teleported here. Yeah. Uh, everything bad's happening. I, that's great. It's, it's really good. Yeah. Um, every, all the Ricks getting shot, the brutal, and Morty, Ricks and Morty's getting killed left and right. And again, it's all like, a pre-established background character, so like you care a little. Like rest see, in peace, Hammer Morty. Yeah, rest in peace, like, Hammer, hammer Morty. Morty is just like yeah. some weird background like gag. Like, oh, <laughs> what if one of the Mortys is a hammer? And in this one, we see the Rick wielding the Hammer Morty, like yeah. beating people to death with it, and then it gets shot. Like, so it it serves its one other purpose it could have. Like, yeah. it has it's two purposes: one, to be a random background gag; two, and then to, to die. be used as a Chekhov's gun, right. and then to just get killed. It's like, perfect. That's all we <laughs> needed from him. He never has to show up again. Yep. Doesn't have to be, like, once per season, oh, here's Hammer Morty Yeah, again, it, like, you don't, know? don't, you, you, you don't want to be pulling, like, a, uh, uh, an Adventure Time style party god, and, like, try to make this ridiculous character that should show up exactly once into, like, a regular character. Yeah, that's the mistake, and they don't do that here. Thank God. Um, how yeah. about that Szechuan sauce? How about well? How about the whole memory sequence where I mean I, I had to watch this twice to really understand what was going on. So he does this whole thing where so he's been captured and they're yeah. trying to extract memories from it. And he's got this like uh, so Rick immediately figures this out and the way he plays them and you know they do the fake out where like they're exploring his memories. They're like, hey, you better go to the place uh, where you invented your interdimensional travel gun. And so that he thinks that they they think that he's leading them to that. And we see in in the midst of that, we see like his 
his wife, the mysteriously absent wife, mother of um, of Beth character that everyone's been wondering about. And then, like, it plays you the whole way. And then when you get to the end, both the, like, the way that he came up with the portal, the interdimensional portal gun, and the, the mother character were both fictional. They right. were not real. So they got played and we got played right. at the same time. I mean, I was suspicious of that memory because it seemed way too straight like straightforward for right, how yeah. his wife and daughter died uh-huh. like or and also why would beth have gotten blown up in the well interdimensional world? you know went to another right. one i guess yeah I, don't know. I mean that was as soon as that happened i was like well what the hell that that's not the real story cuz beth can't be dead unless he was mm-hmm. going to rebuild her but like i mean we've already seen rick abandon one beth and just get a new one that's true. you know we've seen that in the show yeah incidentally they we get to see the new the world the cronenberg world that yeah. was abandoned which was great i love yeah, that the cronenberg world comes back and once again we bring back the cronenberg world it's a great reference to an old joke mm-hmm. immediately all three of them get frozen probably dead so we yeah. don't have to go back there again. Yeah, you know? I, I am like, content to know. Like, it's it's good to know what these characters are doing because they were yeah. these were the characters that we grew up with through all of season one. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, to see to just see them, they're doing fine. They're doing fine. Don't yeah. worry about it. I, that makes me dead happy. Now. <laughs> I bet they'll be okay. I know that actually freezing to like totally will actually kill you, but it's magic space guns. So. Well, I mean, the first episode, someone got frozen and immediately fell and broke to pieces. They didn't fall and break to pieces, so maybe <laughs> they're okay. <laughs> um. Yeah. By the way, can we talk about how how great and like so the the thing that we're wondering is so Rick's got his plan, but what are like Morty and Summer gonna do? I, I mean, I personally was wondering like no what agency can like Morty and Summer do to like get involved in the plot again? And the the idea of digging up the dead Rick and yeah. finding his portal gun that that gives them an in back into like actually doing something relevant in the story. Right. Just a really good use of these like dead bodies in the background yeah. in, in the backyard. Really, really good stuff. Yeah, um, the the portal gun got smashed, so they can't use it anymore. Well, but but that was great because yeah. you know that it, it was the, a great the way Ricks to give came. them something to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah uh, I think I really want us to like. I think the number one promise this show made in season one that hasn't been delivered on mm. is uh, the evil Morty and this Eye patch guy. This, yeah, this general idea that I think our Morty is special. You know, and like Rick says so in that episode as kind of like a haha we're buddies kind of thing yeah. but like as the show goes on we more and more see how our morty is like growing ever more cynical and more understanding like how he rick. literally tried to kill rick this episode yeah. he did his best to murder rick but like you know other mortys are presented as like significantly more retarded than yeah him. that's like, true even when we were first introduced to there being more than mortys like ours is supposedly the good morty the mm. one that's like they, they they tell of in legends you know true true and uh in this episode he he, he himself is like Oh, my lawyer's a fucking Morty. Like, yeah. you know, obviously this is unfair. <laughs> so, like, even though our Morty is still, like, an idiot in some ways, like, he's definitely smarter than he's supposed to be. He's developed a lot as a person and yeah. a character. And while it's mostly made him into, like, a cynical asshole... Um, he still cares about Summer, though, you know? He's, yeah. He's become cynical in the way that he tries to pretend that he doesn't care about Rick anymore, specifically to protect Summer, right. shows some real maturity and, and development. Yeah. And uh, I'm interested to know if we're going to get... Like, if Morty is going to become, you know, more of a hero, or yeah. if, if he's going to keep growing as, like, a, you know... I kind of want to see him get out of this phase he's in of, like, really, up, like, depressed, kind of. You uh-huh. know, like, he's really upset with, like, like what's going on with Rick and everything. Like, it's kind of breaking him down to see this nihilistic Well, universe, ending the know? episode the way Rick chose to is not good <laughs> for that, for healing yeah. his mental faculties at all. I, I'm just wondering if we'll see Morty evolve more, or uh, if he'll, if we'll bring back the evil Morty finally. Like That's, that's gotta happen. That's, that's the number one thing we yeah, all want to see. everything else has been brought back. That's like, right. This show That's has right. never like had a promise that it didn't deliver on. Right. Um. So that has to appear at some point. Yep. You know. Um, They've got to be. These guys are way too smart to not do yeah, that. Yeah. There must have been a plan for it in the in the cards. Mm-hmm. Maybe they just haven't figured out how to work it in yet. You know. The only danger is once that happens, like I'll still love the show, but yeah. I'll I I always want something to look forward to. You know. Right. They gotta give give me something. Well, to, I'm sure to hope we can for. establish more shit now. Right. You know. Right. Like, there's definitively this feeling of like putting a lot of stuff behind us and being like, okay, we've resu- we're tying up all these loose ends so we can introduce new shit. Yeah. Um, but there's still some loose ends like, uh, you know, Evil Morty and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, tying up the whole Beth and uh, Jerry thing is. My- I'm so glad. I was just like, oh, thank you. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm glad they did it like in kind of a glib way where they were like, look, we know you get it already. Like they've we've already seen like if they made a whole episode about them like finally getting divorced, it's like we. We've kind been of boring already as saw shit. that. Yeah, you know, like yeah. we've already seen that 
character arc happened, but you know what so this this why was not do it flip and the way they did it quickly was really good because it actually made me like jerry this is probably the most i've ever liked jerry he's just like you know what this is it i'm actually taking action in my yeah. life i'm saying it's me or him right now which is entirely appropriate to do because yeah. rick is a fucking monster uh more or less and yeah just really the right way to do it yeah um what else happened in this episode? Why don't we talk a little bit about the Sejuan sauce? Because yeah. that is relevant. That's important, I think. And the discussion that's gone on around it is, <laughs> is you know, we, we did you, a little you research. Stuck in your head. I really uh, well, feel like it's worth talking uh, about. Nate was telling me that um, the Sejuan sauce that they bring up in the episode. It's a meme, um, yeah. Yeah, I guess there was like a campaign because they're, they're remaking Mulan. Um, Are they really? Yeah, is that, that's oh, why okay. it was a campaign. Is that re there's a Mulan remake, and so people were saying, "Bring back the Shezwan sauce for the Mulan remake." Wait, I think you're confused. Cause... No, that's what it said on that article we were reading. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. It said there, there's there, there, there. I mean, I know there is a Mulan remake coming. So like they were saying, "Hey, Rick and Morty talked about how great the Shezwan sauce was okay. from the fucking '90s. Bring it back." It's um, perfect timing, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, then we read an article about how it wasn't coming back, and that there were people who were arguing that it was a problematic sauce. Yeah, a it problematic was cultural fucking appropriation sauce. of Chinese culture because of the chef's sauce. Okay, first of all, do you people even fucking understand what America is? America is a place where you bring stuff and you make it appeal to people and they buy it because they like it. It is inherent to the foundation of the nation that we combine things. If you think that it is a, a wrong thing to do... Okay, first of all, there's a couple things we were thinking about might be the actual argument here. If you think that it is wrong for other cultures to, like, eat the foods that you invented in your culture, first of all, you are 100% wrong. I don't respect your opinion. Go away. If your argument is that it is somehow, like... It's like evil to misrepresent a culture by like having something like a McDonald's dipping sauce that is supposed to be, be like a quote unquote Chinese sauce, but it like isn't spicy enough. It isn't like real Chinese. I would say I still, that is, that is fundamentally flawed because it is on the individual to realize that, okay, this doesn't actually represent China. This is a fucking sauce that McDonald's yeah. is selling to represent like a, a movie that we're making in America. It's not fucking China. So what is the actual argument that there's something like harmful about this sauce i do not fundamentally understand this idea of cultural appropriation being bad in this context do you have anything <laughs> to add to this point it's like, dg it's fucking mcdonald's Chess i know <laughs> i because I, I really it's just hilarious to me i don't want to fuck around on this issue i want to actually address people's real concerns and respond i, just can't, I can't, like i mean this is this is what it always is yeah like it's always it's it's just that it's so unimportant. Yeah. Who the fuck cares? That, it's yeah. McDonald's. Like, what what Chinese person is, like, upset that their culture is being besmirched by a McDonald's dipping sauce? McDonald's itself is an affront to all life and culture as it is. <laughs> yeah. Like, the entire Mc existence of McDonald's is an evil scourge American American, like, burger culture is, like, poorly represented by McDonald's to yeah. begin with. So, really, we should be more insulted than yeah, anyone. exactly. Like, it's just... Literally, who gives a fuck? Just give me the fucking Shezwan sauce. It's, Don't be a it's fucking It's fucking idiot. hilarious. Stop yeah. being a fucking chode. Jesus Christ. And you know what? We might be making a mountain out of a molehill here, because we only read, like, one or two articles. But yeah. the fact that there's any discussion... <laughs> Like, Just the fact what that are you doing? I typed in Shezwan Sauce Rick and Morty, and the first, the first article one. was, uh, sorry Rick and Morty fans, but the problematic yeah. Shezwan Sauce isn't coming back, and I immediately burst out laughing when I read that headline. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Fuck you guys. I don't, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't know how we got onto that from a Rick and Morty discussion, but it's fucking... <laughs> they made it about that, dude. Yeah. They, the people out there made it about that. Bring it back. And I, I love that that, like, you know, that Rick went out of his way to do that in his memory because of course that's something he'd care about that's it's that's what i love that they Wonsaw make that kind of it. like a super obscure and cultural like, and, reference and i i totally get it like like you, they make it out like oh haha it's rick being silly but yeah. i'm like nah man like i would pretzel pub chicken sandwich from wendy's <laughs> if i had for some reason i was going through like memories of 2009 i'm getting a fucking pretzel pub chicken you there's know? there's like some mushroom burger at wendy's every once in a while that i always am on the lookout for and it's yeah. gone most of the time it's like cheddar and mushroom yeah like mushroom cheddar burger or something yeah, i fucking great. i want that that's see that's my that the one one dipping sauce right after the pretzel pub chicken they brought in that sandwich which yeah. was also great. Yeah. And then they uh, they kept they kept they had like a revolving door of sandwiches right. that were diminishing in quality as each one <laughs> came in. Uh -huh. 
Um, well, I, uh, the, the point of it is, that's hilarious. And, yeah. you know, it's a fucking joke. I don't understand why anyone would even be mad about it in the slightest. So let's... Let's yeah. all suck it up. I mean, if you're gonna be mad about the sauce, just be mad about the Mulan movie in the first place, which I know. People I think were they would be. I'm Mulan sure they would the be. Movie. They'd make the same argument that oh, it's watering down our culture and yeah, whatever. I, I'm just, uh, the, and the you know what? thing about that is, almost every time one of those things happens, the actual culture loves it. Yeah, like most of them Does, are like really happy that their culture is being represented at all. Do actual Chinese media, people get really know? mad that like Mulan exists and is like, oh, this is a shitty Americanized version of our culture? Like they got things to do. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to speak for them, but I don't think they would consider it I mean, a big I've fucking it, deal. I've seen it all the time in yeah. J- like J- Japan, for sure. instance, where like they get really excited to even have reference to Japan in an American <laughs> film, uh-huh. you know. Um, and they they appropriate Amer- like Americans in Japanese films are the most fucking flanderized, yeah. fucking like misrepresented. We're literally all blonde cowboys who <laughs> scream fuck and shoot guns. Yeah, like, that's every American <laughs> character in a, in uh, in Japan. So yep. like, yep. you know. Oh, but you know, uh, but racism is prejudice plus power. That's yeah. So. That's the issue. That's the fundamental <laughs> disagreement. Uh... That we have here. Anyway, uh, anything else about this Rick and Morty episode? Well, uh, there's that little uh, teaser at the end with Bird Person's back. You know, that's that's a little something. I don't know how I feel about that. I know what you mean. I don't know. It's a little bit disappointing, kind of. I kind of liked that Bird Person was gone. Like, I like bringing back Tammy as, like, an evil... Yeah, she's alive and relevant. Yeah. Yeah, like, she... I mean, she's kind of like an arch villain now. She's kind of like the big bad. She's the one who initiated all of this. Yep. And, um, you know, I don't know what she's working for now that the world government's gone. So, Shit. Like, and can we just reflect on, I believe the first word we ever heard Tammy say was, wasn't she said, like, yeah, I I'm, love I'm really Bukake. Into Bukake. <laughs> really into Bukake. <laughs> yeah. And she's our main villain. Yeah. Love it. Love um, it. And she's great. Uh, <laughs> she's hot. She fucks. She fucks. Um, she fucks birds. Yeah, yeah uh, it's a little bit. It's a little bit disappointing that they're kind of going back on that and just reviving him like that. But, I mean, he's evil now, and, I mean, they might make it, like, I don't know. It kind of it kind of reminds me of like when uh, Chef died in yeah. uh, South, South Park, Park and yeah. they brought him back as like Darth Chef, but just for like a second, you know. And, that, like, yeah, yeah. I I don't know what they're gonna do with this Darth um, Bird person. Yeah, you know? yeah. But like, we'll see. Seeing it. And especially, like, just doing it as, like, a really tired uh, reference to Star Wars was like, oh, I don't know, man. Like, Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. He looks kind of Borg-ish, too. Yeah, yeah, cyborg-y dude. <sighs> ah, we'll see. Hopefully it'll be good. Yeah. I'm not that worried. I, I, These I guys are good writers. Show, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. There has not been a bad episode of Rick and Morty. Agreed. Um, there's been a couple... Yeah. yeah, there were. There's a couple M- like M- that. M Night Shyamalan's and Raising Gazorp Gazorp are probably the two worst episodes, and those are still yeah. pretty fun. Agreed. I mean, fucking I'd M Night Shyamalan's has the the fucking yes. Wait, which one's that again? Yes, the one where Jerry gets trapped in a simulation. Oh and he yeah, doesn't recognize that it's a simulation. Oh, my, man. my man, Jesse's favorite my line. My man. <laughs> yeah, like that. Even like half of that episode is amazing. Yeah, it's still the worst episode of the show. So, like, <laughs> it's. Hard to fault this, uh, hard to fault Rick and Morty. Yep. Um, so yeah, we'll definitely be looking forward to the rest of season three. No doubt. Um, I gotta rewatch season two soon because mm-hmm. I still have, like, the first three episodes, because they were leaked, I watched them, like, over and over and over again. Yeah, And yeah. then the rest of them I watched on TV and never saw again, so, like... Gotta get, gotta get my uh, season two knowledge up to snuff, so I know all the background characters and lore references that uh, you know that I could look out for when season three gets underway. Because I'm sure, I'm sure any surviving character we're gonna see again. No uh, doubt. That's very much uh, a Dan Harmon thing. I don't, you haven't seen any of Community, have you? I watched all season one. Oh yeah. Yeah, I didn't watch beyond that because I got bored. It definitely gets better in season two. Season I like season one quite a bit. Well, all right, that's cool. Uh, but yeah. Um, th- I mean, a lot of the the arc structure of Rick and Morty, the the meta ness, all of that is extremely like Community. Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, and obviously they can do even more on this show because it's fucking it can do literally anything. Yep. Um, and it it's always willing to just. Like, what I love about Rick and Morty is that it's not even that it's pushing the boundaries; it's that it's just past all of them. Like it represents that we're kind of in an era where you can literally do anything. Like, yeah. You can go as violent as you want. You can say whatever words you want. You can fucking present the most insane concepts you've ever heard of at the drop of a hat and just keep going. There's no, like, hand-holding. 
Um, you know, and I mean, you could argue that the daily life scenes are like to give retarded audiences like something to cling to. Uh-huh. But um, but even then, I just feel like this show can do literally anything, and mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. this is a like where is the line anymore? Like, what's holding it back? Other than it has to be twenty two minutes long. Yeah, you know, that's like the only real uh real thing and you know and and i really do trust these writers to whatever they choose to talk about they will do it in a hilarious intelligent and like well thought out way that fits cohesively into the overall structure of the show so just one of the best fucking shows i've ever seen and definitely airing right now yeah absolutely fantastic cannot wait for more please give us news about when it's coming out people all right, y'all. Uh, join us next time, whenever that is. Whenever no it idea. is. Yeah. I mean, maybe we could like try to maybe do some back episodes while we're you know if we want to make this like a weekly show. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Leading up to whenever the hell the actual show starts. We get a good twenty four weeks if we wanted yeah. to do it. Also, um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, we don't have to do every episode. We can just yeah. do the highlights. Um, I'm down. All right, everybody. See you then. Goodbye, Moon Man. Goodbye, Moon Man.